Hi people, anyone's wondering about the smoke that you may see drifting across, that is incense. I occasionally burn incense for relaxation. So uh, I've come across a story today that I think um, is useful as a talking point for a number of issues around um, anti-Semitism, free speech, uh, um, where are the red lines of criticising nation states versus bigotry towards nationals of those states. So uh, I'm just going to read out the report first of all. This is from LBC and the report is by Kieran Kelly. Um, an Israeli theatre goer has described how a comic incited a crowd against him and eventually forced him to leave a comedy show after being left feeling unsafe. Uh, so just bear with me, I'm going to read this out and as usual uh, leave a link to it in the description. Jewish attendees were subject to verbal abuse after the end of Paul Curry's show at the Soho Theatre in central London. On Saturday night, the theatre has said, The Hav Etam, an Israeli man, had been attending the one-hour show uh, Shtum, that's S-H-T-O-O-M, by the comedian at the theatre when the incident occurred. Mr Etan told LBC, I hadn't heard about him until that day. It was a pretty spontaneous thing. Having experienced London in the last four months, I already know that before heading out, I should probably do a, do a background check because I have been to club nights where DJ will start hounding Israeli occupation. Mr Etan, who has lived in the UK for the last five years, told LBC's Nick Ferrari, I've just watched that interview, that towards the end of Curry's show, the comic pulled out a Palestinian flag and a Ukraine flag. We didn't really say anything. We stayed silent for the rest of the show. A mine was already elsewhere, he recalled. At the end of the show, Paul got the crowd on the feet to clap for him. My friend and I didn't get up and clap for him, and that must have bothered him. So he turned around to us and said to the entire crowd, Thank you to these two people for sta not standing up and clapping. The comic lingered on Mr. Eaton and his friend, hoping for them to stand up and clap. So I said thank you for the Palestine flag, hoping I would explain to him why I didn't choose to get up and clap and hoping he would just move on. He turned on me, screaming that he was from Belfast and knows about ceasefires. He told me to get that and I'll quote, fuck out of the show. A lot of the audience was shocked. Some booed at us. One from the front row shouted shame at us. We had to gather our things and go. Mr. Eitan then explained how the theatre had no contingency plan to deal with such an event. In the end, Mr. Eaton and his friend had to walk past the stage where Curry was still shouting from in order to leave. He claims he was not given any protection by staff and simply left on the street as hundreds of theatre goers, some of which were chanting Free Palestine, left almost immediately afterwards. The theatre has now confirmed it as banned Curry from the venue, saying intimidation of audience members due to their nationality, race or beliefs is not acceptable. A spokesperson for the theatre said on Saturday evening, following the end of Paul Curry's show, Stum, Jewish members of the audience were subjected to verbal abuse and the performer aggressively demanding they leave the theatre. Such appalling actions are unacceptable and they have no place on our stages now or ever. We will not be inviting Paul Curry back to perform at our venue. While the theatre has not been in touch with Mr Eaton, he said he was happy with their apology and decision to ban the comic. They continued, while we robustly support the right of artists to express a wide range of views in the shows, intimidation of audience members, acts of anti-Semitism or other forms of racism will not be tolerated so Soho Theatre. We're continuing our investigation, discussing the incident with the evening's audience and consulting with the police. We are working with the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism to meet with members of the audience who were affected. We are taking professional advice to safeguard the much-valued inclusivity of Soho Theatre. Recounting the incident, an eyewitness said it felt like we were welcome in the theatre as long as our identities as Jews weren't known, and the minute our identities were known, we felt threatened. So I don't know if that's another Jewish member who maybe wants to remain anonymous. Uh, leaving the theatre, I felt threatened. I didn't know if I was going to get physically assaulted. We were all shaken. We were extremely upset and anxious. One of the eyewitnesses' friends later received a message from another attendee of the show who claimed the situation became even more inflamed when they had left. Soho Theatre has since done some investigation and apologised for the incident. A spokesman for CAA, that's I think a grouping of theatres, 
uh, said what the Jewish audience members have accounted as atrocious and we are working with them and our lawyers to ensure that those who are instigated and enabled it are held to account. These allegations are of, deep dis are of deeply disturbing discriminatory abuse against Jews. Comedians are rightly given broad latitude, but hounding Jews out of fate is as reminiscent of humanity's darkest days and must have no place in central London in 2024. Mr Curry has been approached for comment. A Met Police spokesperson said, We are aware of the incident that took place at the Soho Theatre on Saturday evening. We understand why it was upsetting for those involved, and we note the venue has issued a statement confirming they're looking into what place. A report was submitted to police on Monday, and inquiries are ongoing. Right, I, I want to read out the whole thing for context. Um, there's a number of things to digest with this. I've already seen people saying, No, this was not anti Semitism because his Judaism was not mentioned by this so-called comic. Um, there's been responses. Uh, Rabbi, uh, Chief Rabbi has commented by Chief Amina, a leading rabbi, I should say. Um, rabbi Yitzhak Shoket, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, of the Mill Hill Synagogue in North West London, has now slammed the comedian for a blatant display of bigotry. Speaking to an LBC reporter, Rabbi Shoket, said of the comedian, disappointed would be a gross understatement, concern would be a gross understatement, shock beyond extreme would be a more accurate measure of how I'm reacting at the moment. Uh, Maureen Lippmann, Dame Maureen Lippmann has responded, and she has somewhat strangely blamed woke culture for this. Um, I think her logic is that because of wokeism, nothing is fair game for comics except anti-Semitism. I don't entirely agree with that. Um, I mean, we've seen other insulting um, things coming from comics in recent years, um, like, uh, get the guy's name off the top of my head, but the the so-called joke about Romanies killed in the Holocaust. So um, I don't entirely agree with that. I think comics, there are stand-up comics out there who just seek to provoke for the sake of it. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of stand-up comics. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I, I, there's going to be variation, but I do feel that when it comes to the issue of free speech, I do feel that, you know, comedians seem to think that they have more rights to free expression than others. And I think there's sort of a, I don't want to say God complex, but I think there is a real arrogance there, particularly with the cult-like following that their supporters, that they will attract from their supporters, whereby they act like obnoxious um in this obnoxious way. I mean, the little I know of this guy, I don't get a good vibe from him. And I admit I'd never heard of him before today. But the point about being from Belfast, um, thats I don't see what that's got to do with anything. So he knows about ceasefires. Um, there's many conflict zones around the world. So him homing in on the thing about Belfast, being from Belfast myself, I reject that. Um, he held up a Ukrainian and Palestinian flag. Well, um, Mr. Eitan said it was supposed to be a non-verbal performance so you know that's misleading to then get verbal and get political at the end of it um, the holding up of the Palestine flag and the Ukrainian flag I would defend that as free expression but here's the problem you know people will say oh it's not anti-semitic because it wasn't about the Judaism I think they're missing the point um, you know it, to single out an Israeli because of his nationality or two Israelis, is bigotry. I mean, if we were to extend this argument, let's say for the sake of uh, argument, some Chinese people were to go and watch a performance and the, and the comic had strong views about the Chinese Communist Party and, you know, wanted audience members to cheer for Taiwan or Tibet, and then the Chinese patrons refused to cheer, would they then be singled out and hounded out the theatre? Now, had these Israeli patrons come along and they had been vocal, like they heckled, or they were being viscerally pro-Israel, then I would say, well, you know, they were they were also provoking, but they they were silent. They just they just didn't want to clap along with that. Um, I think this is disgusting, and I think it's pretty obvious, obviously an act of bigotry. And I, I think when Israel is singled out, when Israelis are singled out for condemnation, then there is definitely attraction there which goes towards anti-Semitism. Let me explain. 
I've always defended the right to criticise Israel, and I am not happy with what's going on at the moment. I think Israel is going too far. I think there are far-right Israeli politicians who are looking at collective punishment. I think Netanyahu has enabled them. And you'd have to be made of stone not to, to look at what's going on in Gaza and not think that it is an awful, awful situation. So I think criticism of Israel is legitimate. In fact, even David Cameron and uh, the Biden administration have come out and said that they do not support this move in in the Rafa crossing, uh, the purported incursion that's going on there. I haven't seen the latest news on that. But clearly, Palestinian suffering is unbearable right now. Clearly, it is very, very bad. So I will always defend the right to criticise Israel. But when there's an obsession with Israel and when Israelis are picked on solely for being Israelis, I'm not talking about Netanyahu supporters or even vocal Israelis who are defending Israel. I'm talking about simply being an Israeli. Now, someone can't help their nationality. These guys just wanted to go there for a night of entertainment. Um, he said he'd done a background check. I assume that this hasn't happened before, and that's why. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if this is a full story. We are only hearing from their point of view, but... I think it's notable if there was no bigotry involved, if there, this, you know, if this was different from how it's being reported, then why is Paul Curry not defending himself? Why is he not saying no, no, that's not what happened? Um, he's, you know, it's a case of no comment. So I think he knows damn well what he done, and it's disgusting. It's a case of bullying these patrons. It's a case of inciting a mob against them, and there wasn't violence, but. Honestly, given some of the things that have been happening recently at protests, it could have been. You know, the audience could very well have turned on these guys. Some of the audience may have been Palestinians and feelings may have boiled over. Now, clearly there's very strong emotions going on right now with what's happening in the Middle East. But it is troubling to see people seeming to think that gives them a green light to behave in such an obnoxious way. I think Paul Curry should be blacklisted from other theatres because honestly this has echoes of the 1930s. I think when you're homing in on Israelis and um, when you're singling Israel out and turning a blind eye to other regimes, I mean I, I would raise the question, he held up the Ukrainian flag, whether that was to draw some sort of analogy, I don't know, but the question would be if he had Russian patrons would he do the same thing? Maybe he would. But attacking people for their nationality is bigotry, whatever way you gloss it over. Now, it's different if someone is an Israeli or Chinese or Russian or you name it, and they're defending their country and they're being political, then I would say it's fair game. I mean, we have had situations in this country of Chinese nationals being very vocally supportive of the CCP, and I would say they deserve all the um, blowback they get. And if you have Israelis who are focally defending Israel, which is, you know, it's part of free speech, but, you know, that is, it's a political thing. So there's going to be debate. There's going to be animosity there. But these guys were not doing that. They were just going to enjoy the show. And they were picked on solely for the nationality. Um, and I think Paul Curry, the way he's behaved is disgusting. Um, I would say he's a fub. I mean, this so-called comedian, he's literally inciting his audience uh, against, you know, those who don't see the world the way he does. Um, I think that's very ugly. And I personally think he should be blacklisted from other theatres. This is not a question of free speech. This is a question of incitement. Um, that's where the free speech issue, to my mind, becomes a red line. Because if you're inciting people, it's especially with the rise in anti-Semitic anti attacks in this country. Now, in the event there was no violence, but there could have been, you know, it was a hostile atmosphere, and I imagine it would be very unpleasant. I mean, I can imagine, put yourself in this position um, as a Briton, right? If you go to, say, um, I don't know, Iran, or another part of the world that isn't exactly friendly to Britain right now, and you were to you know, go to an event and your nationality was singled out and you weren't being political, you weren't saying anything, but you were singled out and picked on, it would be a very unpleasant and ugly thing. Um, the Metropolitan Police, if 
you know, it's been established that hate crime has been committed, they have to follow up on it because they're absolutely not consistent. Um, you know, Christian street preachers have been harassed. Um, so why is it that, you know, they say they take anti-Semitism seriously. Well, this comic should be investigated if he is inciting audiences to behave this way. Um, you know, trying to jeer people out of theatres. Uh, incidentally, acting as if it's his theatre. He's merely hired the place um, or whatever is uh, whatever procedure it is, but he doesn't own the theatre. Um, so I, I do find it troubling. Now, on the wider point about criticising nation states, I, I would say it's completely legitimate to criticise Israel and I wouldn't support punishing someone simply for criticising Israel. There's another controversy, which is the Rochdale by-election, of course. And that, again, it's a question of where is the legitimate criticism of a nation state versus bigotry and anti-Semitism? The candidate that has now, he hasn't been suspended because it's past the deadline, but he won't sit as a Labour MP if elected, he'll sit as an independent. The problem was he wasn't talking about Israel, he was talking about the Jews. And this is where it gets into something else. Now, I would actually say if a Labour MP, a Labour parliamentarian was to criticise Israel, that should be protected. That's, you know, even uh, Tories have criticised Israel. Uh, so I don't think I would be uncomfortable if people were punished solely for criticising Israel. But when you start to see um, a fixation on Israel and a fixation on Israelis, and then it morphs into the Jews, it, um, in the anti-Semitic tropes like Jewish media control and all the rest of it, that is something else. And I would argue that, you know, there is a lack of um, consistency with those who bleat about pacifism and human rights. They don't have a damn thing to say about what Arab states do. I mean, where is their condemnation of Iran launching missile strikes against Pakistan and Iraq, some of which killed civilians? Um you know, ostensibly because they claim there are Mossad bases there, but where's the condemnation of Iran? Now, I know it's on a different scale, but let's look at Syria. You know, hundreds of thousands killed and injured over the last decade. Um, where were these people when Assad was dropping barrel bombs on children? So I do think that what I would say is whilst criticism of Israel in of itself doesn't represent bigotry, Fixating on Israel and ignoring the abuses of other states, I would say is borderline anti-Semitism because Israel is unique. It's the only Jewish state. This is not to say it cannot be criticised. That's not what I'm saying. But I do question those who obsess about Israel whilst and, and they get so angry and so visceral about this. In another incident, a group of the pro-Palestinian or the Palestinian Solidarity Group, I think they call themselves, gathered outside Tobias Elwood's house, the Tory MP, uh, because he hasn't backed uh, calls for a ceasefire. And they say they weren't bullying him, they weren't harassing him, but what else is that? When you're gathering outside someone's house, what else, if not intended to be intimidation, harassment? Um, I definitely think the police should move in there. It's one thing saying we disagree with his position, lobbying him, even protesting, but to hound the man at his own house, I think that's unacceptable. And I'd say that of any parliamentarian. Um, I mean, I have strong disagreements with Jeremy Hunt regarding uh, the way claimants are treated, but I wouldn't advocate welfare claimants go and protest outside Jeremy Hunt's house. It's, I think that's crossing a line. Um, criticism, yes. There must, must be freedom to criticise. But what Paul Curry has done is something else. It's incitement. Um, you know, if people can be questioned by the police for much lesser things, then why should he get away with it just because he calls himself a comedian? I have a big problem with this argument that comedians somehow should have more free speech than everyone else. And I don't entirely agree with Dame Maureen Lippman because she's implying that comics can say, uh, cannot say anything except anti-Semitism. Actually, there's quite a lot they can get away with. So I don't agree with her on that. Um, as long as they hide behind comedy, you know. Um, here's the thing. If you're going to be provocative, you're going to get criticised. Um, I just have a problem with comics thinking that they alone have free speech. Um, so, Paul Curry, shame on you. Shame on you for doing that. 
um, if there is more to this, why is he not defending himself? That's an obvious question. You know, if this is a case of these guys are exaggerating what happened and maybe they were there with a political agenda or something, why is Paul Curry not saying that? But they just went to enjoy their evening. So it is very, very, very important that people understand that anti-Semitism is, is out there. I think criticism of Israel is legitimate, but when there's a fixation on Israel, you have to question the motivation when it's not consistent. Now, I've criticised some of the things Israel's doing. I think the aerial bombardment is atrocious. It is killing innocent people. So naturally, people are going to have strong views on that, particularly if they're Palestinian descent and they have family out there. I wouldn't blame them for having strong views, just like I wouldn't blame Israelis for maybe knowing people who were taken as hostage or killed in the kibbutzes on um, October the 7th. You know, this is a conflict that it incites very strong views. But to have a so-called comic inciting a crowd against Jewish men um, in 2024, and I'm saying Jewish men because, you know, I don't think Judaism has to be explicitly mentioned to represent anti-Semitism. I think when there's a fixation on Israel or Israelis, and even if you don't accept that it's anti-Semitic, it's anti-Israel bigotry. I mean, how does he know that those guys completely agree with Netanyahu? Maybe they don't. Uh, Mr. Eitan hasn't said what his politics are, but there's Israelis who disagree with the way this war is going. There's Israelis who disagree with Netanyahu. Israel's a diverse society. So um, it's a bit, this is why I don't agree with vilifying